Previously on Sailing Adrift. What do we got here? What's happening? <laughs> well, we know what we're doing up here. After a lengthy discussion, we came up with a game plan on how to finish off the ceiling. Then Chris did something truly amazing. There. All the lats are rough fit. So the next step is to pull them all down and number them and then make them look pretty. Put it back up. So that's what I'm gonna work on. That's all? That's all you got? Oh well. Do you want me to keep going? Okay, we lied. They're not totally cut to size. We still needed to punch out all the port lights. What are you doing in there? What are you doing out there? I'm a nosy neighbor. Is that the world at large? This is the world at large, Kelly. How and is I've it? uncovered it. Good, good for you. I'm using this uh, template to drill holes that we will later use to uh, create the shape that we want on this. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the sides of these because I think we don't need this much of a lip. That way more sunlight and stuff like that. I've got one thing to do on the table saw, then I'll be back. Okay. Ready. Now, what could he be cutting? I could use the multi-tool. I think I'm just going to cut these from outside. Oh, you're going to cut holes in the boat? No, I'm not. There's okay. already holes in the boat. Yeah, somebody made an holes. executive decision and punched out all the windows. What? Nothing. We got them out. Luckily, their design is simple enough that we can recreate these better because this is just ridiculous. And now we don't have a window. Well, it's going to get no ones anyway. Do you really want to rely on this? Well, we, we never talked about it. Okay. I thought we were keeping the windows. No. Okay. Right now, check this out. No, that's like, hold. that's the world at large. We don't want to leave it like this. No. This would be a bad idea. Anyway. Um, multi-tool, got it. I need the multi-tool. BRB. It's working. Well, you'll have to tell me how it looks from the inside from a clean perspective, but... It's not perfect, but it'll work, I think. How's that look from in there? Looks good. Good. Yeah, I think that um, this technique should work as long as it doesn't look terrible from the inside. It doesn't feel terrible from the outside. And then we'll put this on, and put some butyl between it. And then the wood, there's about a lip of a three-eighths of an inch all the way around here. And we'll put some bolts through it to hold them in place. Great. That's the plan. One down, five to go. See ya. All right, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like from the inside. Holes do have a little splintering out, but we're gonna smooth that up and make it look pretty. Chris spent countless hours sanding and prepping these pieces for the epoxy seal. There were a lot of late nights, to say the least. Saturday morning and I'm hiding in the basement because it's nasty outside. I'm going to start the day off with getting these slats ready for the first coat of epoxy, which means I'm going to wipe them down and then vacuum them off and then wipe them down again with some acetone. Exciting stuff. Got all the slats laid out and there are a lot of them and not a lot of space to work in. So. We have a couple different groupings, but everything's ready to start with the epoxy. So all wiped down and ready to go. But wait, there's more. This 
this was a pretty daunting task. I mean, you saw how many slats we had to carefully coat. The first layer took us almost two hours to complete. The first round is done. Want to see how it looks? But before we knew it, it was time for the second coat, and that only took about half the time. Doing a little tip in there? Yeah, some tip action for you. I already did the rolling and you're doing just the tip. Yep, just the tip. These look pretty. I think so. Pretty ugly. No, they look great. I know, I can make them look better. There. Okay, cool it, Chris. They really did turn out pretty awesome. All 823 pieces. Remember this cut from earlier? Ready? Any guesses on what that was? These are gonna be our new port lights, though. Cool. They are brand new acrylic smoked brown. Can't really tell. No, you can't. Brown. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Turn the corners to make them round. All right, cool. So like that. I like your uh, time-saving ability. What do you mean? Well, instead of doing them individually, you just did them all together. Plus, you get the synergy of them being together, so they're less likely to splinter. Did you read that on the internet? No, I just made it up. Okay. Whoa! That's what they look like. Cool. I mean, like really acrylic, I was kind of afraid of it. And I know I mentioned this when I was making the hatches, but it's just like any other product. The only thing you gotta worry about is like splintering. The one time I've had bad luck is when I was trying to drill through them and they spidered. Yeah, that was bad. But then I bought, it's been a while since I've used them, but these are acrylic point drills and cool. they work great. Groovy. And that's what we use when we uh, get ours all set up. They have like a nice sharp point on them to kind of like slowly auger that out. And what's awesome about it is you can also use them as a countersink uh, for the screw heads. So Dual that's purpose. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to clean these up with uh, some uh, sanding and then we'll go test fit them. Cool. All right. We've made a prototype. Drill the holes throughout the sides. We'll uh, use number eight bolts to hold this in place. Should be plenty strong for this application. I wanna make sure this fits and, and fits into our framing before we go ahead and drill the other five. But I did mark them all. So if this one works out, we're all set to go. These acrylic blades, once again, are pretty, pretty badass. We'll just use a regular blade going into the boat because that's going through the walnut of the inside. So let's do it. Fit seems nice and snug. The real question is, is this gonna go into wood or miss our little frame all together? A lot of them got right into the meat. Nice. All along the bottom and the top, it does get a little scary up here at the top, but still very usable. This one on the edge here, it's the only one that's scary. It's still got wood on the side, but I'm gonna have to be very careful with that. Well, that seemed to have done the trick. Let's go ahead and drill the rest of them and test fit them. We're gonna designate each one to a specific location. This was the one we test fitted. And while it's gonna work great, I did expand out a little bit because with the test fit, I saw I had a little bit more meat that I could utilize. So each one of the holes is just slightly farther out towards the edge. 
and that should give us maximum pull. When you've got it up and in place, the thickness of this provides a nice guide to get a nice straight drill into the wood behind it. So I know that uh, we won't have the same problem of like bolts being skewed. So I'm gonna go test fit and label each of these and then we're gonna be good as far as that goes. They'll be ready to be installed once we're finally ready, but I've gotta go test fit these first. We've cut the acrylic, now it's time to test fit it. Kelly, you gotta go in the V-Birth. Each one has been cut and sanded and then polished kind of. All that white is just the sanding residue, but it should be pretty, pretty well beautiful underneath. But we'll finish the final polishing once we know that they fit, which is the prudent thing to do. Are you ready? I can't see you. I can see you. Where are you? Your cute little face. Okay, so here's what I need you to do. What? Fill over this lip right here, the smooth part. Yeah. You're gonna need to make sure that when I put this in, that it's going right up against that or very close. No gap. Okay. It's very close, but I can fit my fingernail in there. It might just be the angle of it. What about all the way around the edges? It gets tighter over here. Okay. It's a little loose over here, a little gappy. I can fit my whole fingernail in there. Okay. But Maybe I can. Land. Nope. 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 Well, I mean, the problem of the hole is is contoured and this plexiglass is not. So maybe that's why they went with a thinner oh. plexiglass is because it gets a flex. That is a good point. I'm happy with them. I think they're going to be good. We should be able to seal around that. Yeah. I mean, you just need to put what more like a butyl tape in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So the next step will be to establish the screw hole patterns and then drill through all of these and then through all of this and then we got to take them down. Cool. Later, dude. Bye. It is with great pleasure I get to say these are finished and ready to be put away until we install them. I'm not sure when that will be. Sometime in the next year, hopefully but I'm uh, gonna put them where they belong so they don't get lost or scuffed up or messed up in any way. Thanks for watching and uh, give us a like, subscribe. We like all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna put these away now and uh, we're gonna get on with our lives. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. And special thanks to our patron crew. We really appreciate your support. I'm perfectly capable of cutting my own Lexan. Yeah, he's perfectly capable. Perfectly capable, Lisa. Yeah. I need your help. Chris, you cut too far. There's a hole in your boat. Don't worry, it's above the waterline. Some chitlins. What are chitlins? Look it up. Okay. Hi, I'm adorbs. It's like it releases some sort of noxious chemical. I can definitely smell that now. Okay, thank yeah. you. I thought I was going crazy over here. I thought I had COVID. Until next time, sayonara.